<clears throat> Hello and welcome to my channel. <laughs> Happy New Year and Chinese New Year. <laughs> I know this video is very long overdue. I guess life got in the way. As you may notice, I have moved house again. Hopefully this one is a bit more permanent and I am going to be setting up my studio in this very room. Also, it's super hot in Auckland today and I can't have the fan on because it makes too much noise. So I will just be sweating and fanning myself with this clear file. So without further ado, let's just get into it, shall we? How long have you been doing music? Pretty much my whole life. My mum said that I started singing when I was like one and a half in the crib. I was just singing myself to sleep. I learned piano for a couple of years, didn't do any grades, moved on to the flute, which I did for eight or nine years. Also studied the guzheng for a couple of years. It's also called the Chinese zither. I was in orchestras and choirs and chamber groups and rock bands. Basically just a huge music nerd. At a certain point I wanted to learn how to play an instrument and sing at the same time and a guitar was more portable than a piano. So I actually bought a guitar years and years ago and it hurt too much to play so I gave up after like a week. And years and years later, I bought a ukulele because I figured it was easier. From then on, I transitioned back into the guitar. And also I play a baby dreadnought guitar which is smaller than the standard sized. I guess I started properly playing the guitar when I started this YouTube channel, so about two and a half years ago. And by properly, I mean like I learnt six chords and I only know how to play those six chords. <laughs> I'm also still really bad at playing bar chords. It's still a learning process. <laughs> Who's your favourite artist? I guess I usually tend to gravitate towards female vocalists with really technical, melodic voices. Like Ariana Grande, Lana Del Rey, Lady Gaga, Alicia Keys, that kind of really soulful, rich kind of voice. I've always been a huge fan of like old-timey jazz, Ella Fitzgerald, Frankie Valli, Frank Sinatra, voices to aspire to. When I was younger I did go through pretty extreme like K-pop, J-rock, Visual K, Mando Pop periods, which I've mostly kind of grown out of, but I do occasionally will still go back to those, depending on my mood. I'm losing my voice. This is so much harder than singing. What were the first and last concerts you went to? I actually didn't go to a real concert until I was quite old. Um, my first concert was Justin Timberlake for his 2020 tour in Auckland. It was incredible. His showmanship, his vocals, his dancing, his, his group, the band, the dancers, everybody was amazing. So in sync. I remember he did this really interesting thing where he put mirrors as his encore song and so everybody was chanting like JT JT for him to come out and then the, the first chords of mirrors came out like bum 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 everyone just went ah! It's amazing. <laughs> the most recent concert I went to was uh, Louis Baker who is a very, very underrated New Zealand artist. It was a really different experience. His concert venue was smaller, it was more intimate, but again, really great performance, great voice. Glad that I got to see him before he blew up. All right, let's do some rapid fire questions. When is your birthday? My birthday is the 3rd of April, which means I'm in Aries. Take from that what you will. I have also reached the age where I don't like to disclose my age voluntarily, so yeah, no. Do you like sushi? Yes, I do. I love sushi. My favourite sushis are the fatty tuna one and the one that's inside like a sweet tofu skin. What is that called? Inari sushi, that's what it's called. Where do you buy your clothes from? Uh, China. I mostly buy online as well, even when I'm in China, just because it's so handy. The downside is that I am an X, XL in China, so, yep. How do you like your eggs cooked in the morning? Great question. I like my eggs um, crispy, which is sunny side up, but you cook it on a really, really high heat so that it's a little bit burnt on the edges, but it's still runny in the middle. What's your favorite color? Blue is my favorite color. 
What did you have for breakfast? I had jo for breakfast. Congee. It's like a rice porridge. Which also happens to be my comfort food. It was not a good idea actually because it's so hot in Auckland right now. I actually made too much of it and now I have like four liters of congee. Did you go to college? Yes, yes I did. I went for a very long time. And now you can probably guess my age. Oh. Alright, back to some serious questions. How come you decided to choose Lost in Japan as a song to cover? What is your song selection process? Great question. I guess I was and still am trying to grow my channel and get more exposure. So a lot of the songs that I cover are songs that are likely to get views, such as new releases or songs that have just had a video come out. Of course it still has to be a song that I like, preferably a song that's easy to learn, easy to play and sing at the same time, and of course I like covering songs that suit my style and my voice. Lost in Japan just so happened to fit all of those criteria and I just so happened to get really lucky and have the video featured on Glamour and get seen by Sean. So. If you're a newish channel or a musician, singer, cover artist looking for songs to cover, there's no strict formula for it, but if you cover songs that are popular, songs that you like, that suit your voice, eventually people are going to notice. Do you plan to pursue a music career in New Zealand or do you want to eventually relocate to somewhere with a thriving music scene? I've only just relocated to this house, so I don't particularly want to go anywhere anytime soon. The New Zealand music scene is very colourful. We've got a lot of talent, a lot of thriving indie artists, but you're right, the market just is too small to sustain a lot of our talent. I suppose with the internet it is fairly easy to collab with anybody from around the world if you wanted to, but outside of the YouTube bubble it is actually really difficult for New Zealand artists and musicians to make it outside of New Zealand. So I would say that it is kind of disadvantageous to be pursuing music in New Zealand. Which isn't to say that it isn't a good starting place or a good springboard, which is what I'm trying to do. So my goals for 2020 are to release my own EP, put my music on Spotify, um, to start doing more gigs, live performances, and to grow my YouTube and other online fan base. All of which are achievable from the comfort of my lovely new home in New Zealand. So that is what I will be focusing on in the coming year. Thank you Ian for your question because it allowed me to segue into my point. <laughs> I am very excited about the year ahead. Hope you guys are as well. Do stay tuned and I will endeavour to keep you updated with my life. My exciting new life. Yay. Is that how the video is going to end? It is now.